So today we focus our attention on indeterminate form and L'Hopital rule. Okay, indeterminate form and L'Hopital rule. We have already done limit. We already know how to evaluate the limit uh, in, in chapter one. At the beginning of this course, we begin with the concept of limit and we already know how to evaluate. But at that time, we use a simple uh, method to evaluate the limit. And there are certain limit problem that we are not able to solve at that time because we didn't uh, talk about L'Hopital rule. We didn't use L'Hopital rule. So today we will be using the L'Hopital rule and solve some of the limit problem which are actually in indeterminate form, okay? So what are indeterminate form? Well, indeterminate form means uh, any form of this type. So infinitive, my, you know, zero over zero or infinitive over infinitive, infinitive minus infinitive, zero times infinitive, zero power zero, infinity power zero, one power infinity. These kind of forms are called indeterminate form. Okay? So what I mean is that, look at this uh, example one part A. So in this uh, example, limit x tends to one, x square minus x over x square minus one. So in order to evaluate the limit problem, the first thing you may, want, you may want to do is plug in the value directly and see what happens. If you get a meaningful number, you are done. Otherwise, if you get like zero over zero or infinity over infinity, then you have to do some algebra or use the L'Hopital rule. So in this case, as you can see, if I plug in the value directly, I'm gonna get one minus one divided by one minus one, which is zero over zero form. And this is called indeterminate form. So if this is an indeterminate form, one of the method that we use, okay, earlier method that we use is, you can use the high school method. X common remaining x minus one. And then on the bottom, you can write x minus one times x plus one, and this cancel out. So you're gonna get a limit x tends to one. So you have x over x plus one. Now we plug in the value. If we get a meaningful number, we are done. So that means if I plug in the value, I'll get one over one plus one, which is one over two done. So that's how we did in our um, last, I mean, in our, um, in our last class, like a couple of weeks ago in chapter one. Now, in the same manner, I would like you to try this example B as well. Limit X tends to infinitive, three X squared plus five X minus seven over two X squared minus three X plus one. So for this type of problem, when x tends to infinitive, then we did by two methods, okay? So method one, do you remember what is the method that we use? I call it forget the little one method. Forget the little one method. According to this method, what we did is we just consider the uh, leading term from the top, okay? Leading term from the top, which is three X squared. We just invite the leading term from the top and leading term from the bottom, three X squared. Just invite the leader, leading term from the top and bottom. You put them together and they will decide what the answer is, three over two. That's one way we did. Another method is, How we did is divide top and bottom by the highest power in the denominator. So what I mean is that you see in the denominator there is x squared. So that's the highest power of x in the denominator in the bottom part. So we divide everything by that. So that means we'll get 3x squared over x squared plus 5x over x squared minus 7 over x squared 
over 2x square over x square minus 3x over x square plus 1 over x square. And so then what you're going to get is this x square x square cancel out. So you're going to get limit x tends to infinity. And so you have 3 plus uh, 5 over x minus 7 over x square over 2 minus 3 over x plus 1 over x square. Now we plug in the value directly and see what happens. So limit x tends to, I mean, if I plug in the value directly, I'll get 3 plus 5 divided by infinity is 0 minus 0 divided by 2 minus 0 plus 0. So you're going to get 3 over 2. Okay, same thing. So the reason that why, why we have to do this method is because when you plug in the value directly, you're going to get infinity over infinity form. And this is also called the indeterminate form. Okay, indeterminate form. So whenever we got this indeterminate form 0 over 0, 0 over 0, or infinity over infinity, these are the method that we use. Now, let's look at one example here. Let's say this questions. Okay, suppose you are given to evaluate. Let's say this is example, uh, you know, extra example. So you want to evaluate limit x tends to uh, 1 and ln x over x minus 1. So if you plug in the value directly, you're going to get ln 1 over 1 minus 1, which is 0 over 0 form, right? So we have 0 over 0 form. So that means in the earlier example, we were able to use the high school algebra. We, we, would, we were able to, you know, uh, take the common factors and then uh, either common factors or use some high school algebra. But here, what do you do? You can do nothing, okay? So that method actually collapsed. The method that we just learned and we learned at the beginning of the course actually collapsed. It's not enough to solve these kind of problem. So we need another technique, okay? Another method, another rule. And that's the rule we'll be talking about today, okay? To solve this, to evaluate this kind of problem, we need another rule. And that rule is called L'Hopital rule. Okay, that rule is called L'Hopital rule. So what is L'Hopital rule? Well, let me just go back all the way here. Here. It's not intermediate, it's uh, indeterminate. It's a, it's a typo, okay? Indeterminate form. Indeterminate form and L'Hopital rule. So what is indeterminate form? One of the simplest indeterminate form is zero over zero. Another is infinity over infinity. So here is the definition. Let f and z be real functions, which are continuous on the closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the open interval a, b. Suppose that there exists c in that interval a, b, such that f of c equals g of c, which is equal to zero, then limit x tends to c f of x over g of x is equal to limit x tends to c of their derivative. You see, the limit equals their derivative. That's the thing you need to remember. That's called the L'Hopital rule. Let me repeat this. So for L'Hopital rule, when you have the indeterminate form zero over zero or infinity over infinity form, okay, in this two form, then according to the L'Hopital rule, the limit of the function, okay, limit of that expression is equal to limit of their derivative. And that rule is called the L'Hopital rule. Okay, the things to remember, 
it has to be either in this form, zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Whenever you have this form, then you can use this L'Hopital rule. So what I mean is this. Let us use a L'Hopital rule here. So as you know that, okay, this is method one. Now let us solve the same problem using method two, using the L'Hopital rule. I will write LH to represent L'Hopital rule, okay? LH. So according to the L'Hopital rule, let me just copy the question here. The question is limit X tends to one, X square minus X over X square minus one. Clearly this is zero over zero form. So we're gonna use the L'Hopital rule. So when you use, I generally write LH just above the equal sign to mention, to, to let you know that I'm using the L'Hopital rule, okay? Please um, make a habit of writing this, LH just before the, just above the equal sign so that I know you are using L'Hopital rule. So according to the L'Hopital rule, the limit is equals to the limit of their derivative. So what it means is this, this limit must be equal to limits of their derivative. That's, that's the L'Hopital rule. That's it. Okay, guys, any question? Okay, now, limit x tends to one, find the derivative on the top. So you're gonna get two x minus one on the top and find the derivative on the bottom, which is two x. Now plug in the value. If you get zero over zero, use the L'Hopital rule again. If you get a meaningful number, you are done. So if you plug in the value directly, now you're gonna get two times one minus one over uh, two times one, which gives me, how much is that again? This gives me one over two, right? Do we get the same thing here? You see, it's the same thing, same. We got the same answer here. And, you know, answer must be equal. We know that. And this is called, uh, L'Hopital rule. And let us try e this example B using L'Hopital rule. Okay, part B, example one, part B. We did this by method one, which is the forget the little one method. We did this by method two. And let us use the L'Hopital rule method here. So method three. So let me just copy the question. Limit x tends to infinity, three x squared plus five x minus seven over two x squared minus three x plus one. So if you plug in the value directly, you're gonna get infinity over infinity form, which is actually indeterminate form. Therefore, we are able to, you know, this, this is a good candidate for L'Hopital rule. So we can use L'Hopital rule. According to the L'Hopital rule, what we can do is this limit is equal to the limit of their derivative, of their derivative. Keep in mind, you are not using the quotient rule here. So derivative of the top part and derivative of the bottom part separately. No quotient rule. So what I mean is 3x squared minus 5x, I mean plus 5x minus 7 derivative over 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 derivative. That's what it means. And now let us use the, uh, you know, let us, oh, by the way, because I'm using L'Hopital rule, it's always good to write LS just above the equal sign. So limit X tends to infinity here 
it becomes 6x plus 5 minus 0 over 4x minus 3 plus 0. Okay, I don't have to write that 0 here. So I get that. Any questions so far? Now try to plug in the value. If you try to plug in the value, this one is infinity or infinity form again. You see? So we can use the L'Hopital rule again. Use the L'Hopital rule again here. So limit x tends to infinity. So derivative of the top, which means 6x plus 5 derivative over 4x minus 3 derivative. So this is going to give me limit x tends to infinity. So 6 on the top, derivative of that, 6 plus 0. And 4 minus 0, which is 3 over 2. That's the answer. And that's what we got earlier. OK? This is called L'Hopital rule. And we can use that L'Hopital rule to evaluate limit when it is in indeterminate form of zero over zero or infinity over infinity form. Okay. One thing to keep in mind, even though you are finding the derivative on the top and derivative on the bottom separately, don't get confused with cosine rule. So you're not going to use the cosine rule here. That's not what the L'Hopital rule is. Let's try a few questions together. Let's look at example three, just for fun. So evaluate the limit of indeterminate form zero over zero. So let's try part A. I just want to copy the question first. Limit x tends to one, ln x over x minus one, okay? All right, uh, you guys can do this. First, try to plug in the value directly. You're gonna get ln one over one minus one, which is zero over zero form. So that means it is a good candidate for L'Hopital rule. We're gonna use the L'Hopital rule. Okay, guys, I'll leave it to you. Try to complete it by yourself. And write your answer in the chat box. So basically, uh, limit x tends to one. So you find the derivative on the top, which is one over x and derivative on the bottom is simply one. Now plug in the value directly. And if you get a meaningful number, you're done. Otherwise, uh, you will have to you know, use some, some kind of, some, some method here. So when you plug in the value directly, you're gonna get one over one over one, which is actually one. That is your answer, done. And I want you to try part B as well. and write your answer in the chat box.
So from now onwards, I will not write that one state like the derivative state. We do the derivative in our head, okay? So the derivative of the top part is e to the x minus one and derivative of the bottom part is two x. And I just write that directly so that we can save uh, some time. Okay, we skip this, this step right here, the derivative part. And so you're gonna get, uh, now plug in the value directly, you're gonna get e power zero minus one over two times zero, which is zero over zero form. Again, this is a good candidate for L'Hopital rule. So here we have to use the L'Hopital rule twice. So again, L'Hopital rule and limit x tends to zero. So the derivative of the top part is e to the x and derivative of the bottom part is two. So that, and now let us plug in the value and I'm gonna get e power zero over two, which is one over two. So that is your answer. Okay, all right. Um, any questions so far? So part D, um, here is this limit, x tends to zero, uh, 10, 3x over sine 2x. So if you plug in the value directly, you're gonna get 10, zero over sine zero, which means uh, 10, zero is zero, sine zero is zero. So zero over zero form. That means this is a good candidate for L'Hopital rule. So let us use the L'Hopital rule. So for L'Hopital rule, limit x tends to zero, we'll find the derivative on the top and on the bottom separately. So basically you need to find 10 3x, derivative of that, and then sine 2x, derivative of that. So that means limit x tends to zero, uh, 10 3x. So the derivative tangent derivative is secant squared 3x using the chain rule. So times three over sine. The derivative is cosine 2x times two. Okay. I trust that everybody know how to find the derivative. So that's it. Now let us plug in the value. What do we get? We're going to get sec squared zero. Okay, so basically what we got is secant square zero over cos zero times three over two, three over two. So sec square zero is one times three over cos zero is one times two. So basically one times three is, one times three is three, over one times two is two, so that's the answer. Okay, so far we solve all the problems which are in the form zero over zero. So let's try uh, infinitive over infinitive type, example four. So evaluate the limit of indeterminate form of type infinitive over infinitive. Okay, guys, I want you to try part A on your own.
Okay. So in this case, your answer is infinitive because uh, when we use the Laputer rule twice, and this is where we end up. So this one is infinitive over four. It's not indeterminate form. Okay. So in after using the Laputer rule two times, we got infinitive over four form. So which is not indeter indeterminate form. This is simply infinitive. Or you can write limit does not exist. Okay, now let's try part B. First of all, plug in the value, you'll get ln infinitive over again ln infinitive, which means infinitive over infinitive because ln infinitive means infinitive. And so this is the indeterminate form. That means we can use the L'Hopital rule. So let us use the L'Hopital rule here. Okay, now I leave it to you. You can complete it by yourself and write your answer in the chat box. So there is x and there is x squared. So you can cancel that one x. And so remaining is two, two times x cubed plus one will be two x cubed plus two divided by on the bottom, you're gonna get, there is three x. So you're gonna get three x cubed plus three x. Okay. And so when you plug in the value again, you're going to get infinity or infinity form. That means it's a good candidate for L'Hopital rule. So use the L'Hopital rule again. Now, when you plug in, you're gonna get infinity or infinity form. So you can use the L'Hopital rule again. It's a very good question. I mean, interesting. So many times we need to use the L'Hopital rule. It's gonna give me 12 X over 18 X. Okay, so this, you can cancel that X and X if you like. So your answer is going, or you can use the L'Hopital rule again, okay? Either you can cancel this XX or you can use the L'Hopital rule. In either case, your answer will be 12 over 18, which means two over three. That is your answer. Any question so far?
Okay. Um, so if you if you don't have any question, then um, here is another type. So these are the standard type zero over zero and infinity over infinity, where we can use the Lopeter rule directly. So these are the only condition that we can use the Lopeter rule. But you know, life is not that always easy. Sometimes the indeterminate form comes in other form like zero times infinity form. And sometimes it will come in this infinity minus infinity form. And sometimes it will come in this one over infinity, zero power infinity, infinity power zero in this form. So how to do that? Well, how we do is we're gonna use a common sense and a little bit of a trick, okay? So let's, let's try example five. And what is given here is, let me just copy the question here. So the question is limit x tends to zero plus x squared ln x. So this is given. Now, if I plug in the value directly, this is in this form. So zero times ln zero in that form, which means zero times ln zero is infinity form. Okay, it is in this form, you see? Ln zero is infinity. I think everybody know that. So it is in this form. That means we cannot use the L'Hopital rule. That's the problem. We cannot use L'Hopital rule. So how to evaluate this uh, limit then? The high school method that we learned long time ago is not going to help. It's not going to work. And L'Hopital rule also, we cannot use L'Hopital rule. And that's the problem. But the good news is, okay, guys, the good news is using a small trick, using common sense and small trick, we can change this into one of these four, zero over zero or infinity over infinity four. We need to use a small trick, okay? So the trick is this. Since this is in, in the form zero times infinity. So we need to So we need to change this expression either zero over zero or infinity over infinity form, whichever is easy. Whichever is easy. Okay, that's what we need to do. Keep in mind. So to me, to me, I think changing this into can I write this? Do you think x squared ln x and then ln x over one over x squared, do you think they are equal mathematically? Of course they are equal, right? So they are mathematically equal because you see when you have this ln one over x, ln one over x squared, so this can be written as ln x, and then we need to flip the bottom part. So you're gonna get x squared over one. This is exactly the same thing that, that is given in the question. So with this little trick, we can change this into that form. So now if you plug in the value, you're gonna get ln zero over 
1 over 0. So log 0 is infinitive, and 1 over 0 is also infinitive, so infinitive over infinitive form. You see, that's, that's really interesting, isn't it? It was given like 0 times infinitive form with a simple um, trick. We were able to change it into infinitive over infinitive form. So we are able to use the L'Hopital rule. So let us use the L'Hopital rule. I think I, you, you guys can handle it now. So let's complete this. I trust that everybody know how to find the derivative of the top part derivative of ln x is one over x and derivative of one over x squared will be negative two over x cubed. And so if you simplify it a little bit, so you're gonna get limit x tends to zero plus one over x times x cubed So it's going to give me limit x tends to 0 plus. So you're going to get uh, x square over negative x square over 2. And so when you plug in the value, you're going to get 0. And that should be your answer. OK? So using the L'Hopital, even though it's not in that standard form, of indeterminate form zero over zero or infinitive over infinitive, we are able to change this into one of these form, basically this form, and we are able to use the L'Hopital rule and evaluate the limit. Any question? Okay, so example five, uh, zero, times infinitive form, we are done. Now let's look at another form, infinitive minus infinitive form. By the way, can we write infinitive minus infinitive equal to zero? Can I write that? Like when we have x minus x, that is zero, right? y minus y, that is zero, but can I write infinitive minus infinitive zero? No. We cannot write this, keep in mind. There are different kind of infinitive, okay? So infinitive minus infinitive is actually uh, indeterminate form. This is one of the indeterminate form. So in example six, both questions are of this type. We'll do one of them, okay? Maybe let's try part B. So part A, I'll leave it to you. Let's try part B. So when I plug in the value, so I'm going to get secant pi over 2 and then minus 10 pi over 2. So secant pi over 2 is actually infinitive. You, I think everybody know this. If you don't know the, uh, remember the value, you can always use the calculator, but make sure when you use your calculator for trigonometric function, make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. Okay, there is a button mode in your calculator. Change that, uh, you know, your calculator by default is in degree mode. You need to change it into radian mode. I think we discussed that uh, before. Anyway, so this one is infinitive and 10 pi over two is also infinitive. So infinitive over infinity form. That means we cannot use the um, L'Hopital rule directly, okay? L'Hopital rule cannot be used directly. 
So we're going to use some trick. I think the best way is most of the time when there is a trigonometric function like this, if you change it into simple form like sine and cosine, uh, that will be easy to deal with. So uh, let us change this into sine and cosine. So it will be limit x tends to pi over two minus, uh, secant x is one over cos cosine x minus 10x, tangent x is sine x over cosine x. Okay, so that's gonna give me limit x tends to pi over two. And so you're gonna get cos x. So you're gonna get one minus sine x. And let's plug in the value. If I plug in the value, I'm gonna get one minus sine x is sine pi over two over cos pi over two, right? So one minus sine pi over two is one over cos pi over two is zero, which means zero over zero form. Okay, good news guys. It is in the form of zero in, divided by zero. So that is a, space, that is a standard um, indeterminate form for which we can use the L'Hopital rule. That's the good news. So you are able to use the L'Hopital rule now. So using the L'Hopital rule, you're gonna get limit x tends to pi over two minus, find the derivative on the top, which is derivative of one is zero, minus derivative of sine x is cosine x, over derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So let us plug in the value now. What do you get? Negative and negative will be positive. So basically, if I plug in the value, I'm gonna get negative cos pi over two over negative sine pi over two. So it will be negative and negative, you can cancel out. Cos pi over two is a zero and sine pi over two is one. So zero divided by one is simply zero. That is your answer. Any questions so far? Okay, now uh, let's look at another type. So all this type, one, raised to power infinitive or zero raised to power zero or zero raised to power infinitive, you know, these kind, all of them can be done by uh, a certain technique, certain method. And we're gonna learn that method right now. Okay. So maybe um, part A and part B, let's try part B. Let me do this part B here. And then I think you can do part A by yourself by using the same technique. Okay, so let's try part B first. Okay, now, guys, I need your undivided attention, okay? undivided attention. So when I plug in the value, what do I get is cos, cos zero power one over zero. So that means cos zero is one, power one divided by zero is infinity. So this is one raised to power infinity form. So it is a it is, a, it is a, a, an indeterminate form, but it is not the standard one where we can use the L'Hopital rule directly, okay? Even though this is an indeterminate form, we cannot use the L'Hopital rule direct, directly. So what we're gonna do is we'll use a certain trick here, certain technique, and the technique is this. Let us suppose that y equals limit 
x tends to 0 plus cosine x. I just want to suppose that whatever the limit given, I suppose that to be y. Now, the problem here is this, you know, the power, this one over x is sitting on the head of cos x. And that's giving us a little bit of a trouble. Okay, somehow, we want to take this guy who is sitting on the top of this cos x, we want to take this guy down. Okay, that's the, that's the goal. How can I take this um, down is recall from your high school um, algebra. In high school, if you, you know that ln x power n, if this is n there, we can write n ln x. So basically, we can invite logarithm. We can use logarithm both sides. And that way we can bring this one over X, which is on the top of cos X down. So taking logarithm both sides. Okay, let us take the logarithm both sides. You're gonna get ln Y equals limit x tends to zero plus ln cos x one over x. Okay, now using this formula, using this formula, we can write this as limit x tends to zero plus one over x, ln cos x. Okay, that's what we can um, we can do. All right, so I can write this. You know, I can simply write this ln ln cos x over x. So I don't have to write that one there. Now let us plug in the value. What do we get? If I plug in the value, I'm gonna get ln ln cos zero over zero. So it means ln cos zero is one over zero. So ln one is actually zero over zero form. Okay, good news. It is in this standard form zero over zero. So we can use the L'Hopital rule here to evaluate this limit, okay? So let me write LH. Let us use the L'Hopital rule. So according to the L'Hopital rule, I need to find the derivative of the top part and then derivative of the bottom part. So what do I get if I find the derivative of the top part? So I think you guys can uh, write it down by yourself, which is simply, which is simply um, limit x tends to zero, zero plus, zero plus. It's gonna be one over cosine x. <clears throat> and using the chain rule, it will be negative sine x over derivative on the bottom is simply one. So what we got here is limit x tends to zero plus, I'm gonna get negative sine x over cosine x, okay? So this means if you plug in the value directly, what do you get? You're gonna get negative sine x is zero, sine zero over cos zero. Okay, plug in the value. Sine zero is a zero and cos zero is one. So you're gonna get zero divided by one is a zero. So what we got is, notice that this ln y. So what we got here is that our ln y equals zero. That's what we got. Remember, ln y equal to zero. Our goal is to find the value of y. So our goal is to evaluate this limit. 
So this limit means y. So we don't want that log. How can we get rid of this logarithm? You already know, right? Exponentiating, exponentiating both side. So we're gonna get e ln y equals e zero. Remember, we want we want y, not ln y. So in order to you know um, kick out this ln, in order to get rid of the ln logarithm, you exponentiate both sides. So using the rule, I think you already know that e ln x equals simply x. We know this formula from high school. So you're gonna get y there, which is e raised to power zero is one. So y means, what is y? Substitute the value. Substituting a value of y. So y means the same questions that was given. So limit x tends to zero plus. Y means, uh, you know, cos x power one over x equals one. That's how we um, solve it. So in the same manner, step by step, same thing for part A. And I trust that you guys will be able to handle it and I leave it to you because you know you need to, um, I want to give this opportunity to you to practice and get it done by yourself. So this is what the, the L'Hopital rule is, okay? So we actually started with the, standard um, standard um, indeterminate form, which is zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And then down the road, we deal with bunch of other um, indeterminate form. And we are able to change those indeterminate form into one of these. And so we are able to use the L'Hopital rule and solve it, okay? So this is all about L'Hopital rule. 